Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. But if you're new here, well then hey, welcome to Just Horrifying. If you guys love true crimes, don't mind an Aries speaking her mind, and of course don't take offense to any lewdness coming out of my mouth, then I strongly suggest you subscribe to my channel. In today's case, I'm going to be talking about Gannon Stelk. This case is extremely disturbing. In 2020, Gannon Stelk, who was 11, his biological father Eugene, his stepmother Leticia, his biological sister who was 8, and his stepsister who was 17, were living in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Now, if you have ever been to Colorado Springs, you know it's a beautiful town on the front range of the Rockies. About a half a million people call it home. However, it still has a small town feel. On January 27, 2020, Leticia reported Gannon missing as a runaway to the police after he walked to his friend's house at 3.15 p.m. and did not return home by 6. Gannon's father was out of town attending a military training in Oklahoma. Immediately, the stepmother became a suspect by the police due to the fact that, one, she couldn't point out where the friend lived, and two, she couldn't even give them his name. And if that wasn't bad enough to make police suspicious, she changes her story a day later, stating that a man had raped her at gunpoint and then abducted Gannon. But before the gunman left, he hit her on the head twice. The police ended up examining her. However, they couldn't find any injuries on her. Right around this time, the community and people on Facebook began to suspect the stepmother, which led her to post this message on Facebook. I took care of Gannon for the last two years in our home. I would never, never, ever hurt this child. And I know there are some questions out there. That's up to the investigations when they end up letting you guys know. But I've cooperated with them. Still, there was no sign of Gannon, which led the Colorado Springs community to search for him. Many of the neighbors even switched their porch light bulbs to blue, which was Gannon's favorite color in an effort to guide him home. On February 3rd, a neighbor was looking through his surveillance camera footage on Monday, January 27th, the last time Leticia said she saw Gannon. The neighbor's camera captured Leticia and Gannon getting into the vehicle around 10 a.m. and at around 2 p.m., Leticia returning home alone, which was not consistent with when she told investigators she last saw Gannon. Leticia responded to this video stating that Gannon later left with his friend after returning Turning home. Meanwhile, Leticia moved back to South Carolina with family. On February 9th, Leticia released a video of Gannon crying after he burnt the carpet with a candle. On February 21st, the police called off the ground investigation for Gannon without providing any additional details. However, we now know it was because upon searching the stout comb, they identified a stain in Gannon's room that looked like blood, which led them to spray the room with luminol. Once they did, they were able to identify numerous areas of blood spatter within the room. They immediately suspected foul play. Leticia was arrested in connection to the case. She was charged with murder of a child under 12 years of age by a person in a position of trust. Child abuse resulting in death and tampering with a dead body. Authorities announced they don't believe that Gannon is alive. However, they didn't have a body. But on March 18th, two months after Gannon went missing, off Interstate 90, almost 1,400 miles away, construction workers discovered a suitcase which contained the remains of a boy. The suitcase was discovered under an overpass near Pace, Florida. The body was wrapped in a blanket with a pillow. The remains were later confirmed to be Gannon. Upon review of Leticia's cell phone records and Google history, it was discovered that Leticia and Gannon's father were having marital problems. She searched things like, find me a new husband. Husband uses me to babysit his kids. I'm just a glorified babysitter. And find a guy without kids. Additionally, cell phone records show that she texted her daughter on the evening of the 27th requesting carpet cleaner, trash bags, and baking soda. Investigators believe this stuff was used to clean and dispose of evidence. At a preliminary hearing held on September 9th, 2021, a lot of horrific details had emerged. Gannon had been shot, beaten, stabbed, and slashed. 
According to the autopsy, Gannon's cause of death was a gunshot wound to his lower jaw and blunt force trauma to the head. Gannon had a cracked skull, 18 injuries from a sharp object, including two stab wounds. Three bullets were found, one still in Gannon's skull, the two others in a pillow. It's now known from GPS that Leticia had drove to Pensacola. The evidence also included statements that blood-soaked furniture were found at the home, as well as a trail of blood from Gannon's room to the garage. An arrangement hearing was set for November 4th, 2021. The judge said that Stauk will have to attend the hearing where she will have to enter a plea of either guilty or not guilty. As of right now, this psycho bitch is maintaining her innocence. But thank goodness she's in the custody without bond. The case will end up going to trial sometime in 2022. Alright you guys, well, I hope you enjoyed and until next time, bye.